I still remember really clearly meeting both of you as middle school students. Sydney, you're instantly outgoing, lovable, open, and ready to talk about your feelings all the time. <laughs> Good and bad. The way that you loved your family, the way that you loved Brett, and eventually the way that you loved John was fierce and spirited, and it still is. And I mean it as the most sincere and honest compliment when I say that you've become a woman that is exactly a grown-up version of that girl that I met, that optimistic and deep-thinking girl. It's incredible. John, you weren't quite as easy to break through with. <laughs> I think it took about 12 times of me making fun of your jeggings, I guess they were. Tightest jeans I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Trying to listen to Screamo and make a connection with you before I could finally get you to talk to me. That's okay though, because that's what I discovered at that, at that time was this. The, the guy that we all know, that we stand here today watching, a funny, kind, and caring man. When you talk, I want to listen because I know what you're going to say is good. This relationship started forever ago, and no matter, no matter what, you guys keep making it through obstacles, all the way to today. And I promise you this ends up a happy story that I'm about to share, but uh, it's probably about 10th grade, I don't know, around there, Sydney was about 14, 15. Sydney and John broke up, one of those times, right? They were kids, and I went over to see Sydney because I knew that she was gonna be, you know, obviously heartbroken. I wanted to make sure that she was, she was good and she knew that we loved her and cared for her. So I dodged several cats to get to the front door. <laughs> And I said to Sydney, all the stuff that you tell a 15-year-old broke heart and girl. I said, you're okay. Someday you'll meet somebody else. There's plenty of fish in the cul-de-sac, right? But Sydney looked at me, and I swear to you, this is a real story. I don't even know if you remember. But I was old already, so I remember. She said to me, I'm going to marry John. This isn't over. And I swear that happened. And Sydney, Not in a creepy way. You were right. You were right. Today's a huge celebration of the fact that you guys found each other so long ago and you've grown up together. But over the years, I have been very, very blessed to, uh, to witness John as he has grown and matured into the man he is today. And uh, it's a very impressive. And it's a, it's a privilege to call John my son-in-law. As for Sydney, I had always thought that um, when she had found the person that she was going to spend the rest of her life with, that this person would never meet my expectations. John has met, and not only met them, but exceeded my expectations. And I'm just so proud of him the accomplishments that he's made and just so happy to welcome you to our family. <laughs> Sydney, um, you've given me joy throughout my life that only a daughter is able to give. And, uh, you know, she is, uh, I recall when she was a little girl, she used to be dancing and singing to all the Disney songs. <laughs> And now it's, uh, it's just fantastic to see her grow up to be the wonderful woman that she is, who still sings and dances. To Disney songs. <laughs> You've made your mom and myself both very, very proud of you. We, we could not have expected more, and we just love you so much. If everybody could raise your glasses and toast to Mr. and Mrs. Kalabowski, may your lives be filled with happiness and joy and always filled with love. We love you very much. And today in the blink of an eye, uh, Julie and I are just filled with pride with the fact that uh, he, joined, he is now joined with Sydney, a stunningly beautiful, intelligent, and independent in her own right. Uh, uh, woman and life partner so uh, I'm, I'm just we are so proud and that said we're confident that uh, these two who started 10 years ago playing in the driveway together uh, uh, as, as young 11 12 year olds uh, that they're about to embark on a journey of excitement love passion that uh, uh, especially in this Air Force is going to have its own challenges but 
uh, everything that you bring to the table today, all the love that you feel right now. Uh, I don't have any advice. I just have a request that you always remember this time how much love you have with each other and, and that that will always be there to carry you through the hardest towns, challenges. So uh, with that, I need to grab a glass. Please uh, join me in raising your glasses and congratulating John and Sydney on this amazingly wonderful marriage and wish them the most happy and passionate life forever. Here, here. Sydney, you're one of the most sympathetic people I've ever met. I love your concern for others, your care for animals, and your overall passion for compassion. You love to share, and you're also very talented. I know sometimes it's hard not to worry about what everyone thinks, but I think sometimes you worry about whether people think you're worrying enough about them. <laughs> I just want you to know that myself and everyone here are all here to let you know that we love you, and you're awesome. You're kind and caring, a great singer, and you've always been there for John, you're easily one of the most impressive human beings I've ever met. And don't be humble about it. If there's a saying that rings true for John, it's that actions speak louder than words. John hasn't always been the most talkative guy we've talked about, but what he, when he does have something to say, it's always hilarious. I'm not sure if I've ever met someone with so much dedication to get things done, whether it was an electrical engineering project, Air Force ROTC paperwork, mixing and mastering music, delving into the darkest, most painfully hilarious corners of YouTube, or just creating a robot that makes mixed drinks. John stays up for hours. He puts in whatever work necessary to get the job done. I'll never forget all the memories we've made through school, making music, road tripping, and getting into all sorts of different types of trouble. John, always be yourself. You have the best, most original sense of humor I know. With John and Sydney, you might say that opposites attract, but growing with them after so many years, I've come to see how much the same they really are. In other words, I think they see themselves in one another. I'm so happy to have been a part of your relationship, and I'm so proud to be your friend. <laughs> to John and Sydney. I'm gonna keep my speech pretty quick, but I just wanna say how perfect you guys are for each other. And you're so beautiful, and I'm so happy to be here and be a part, a small part of your huge love story. And it's just a wonderful day, and I can't wait to see what else happens for you guys. John, or Weston was so great, and mine's shorter, but I love, I love you all, and I'm so, so, so happy for you. And Maddie, do you want to say a little something? <laughs> I'll say something. Um, I've been Nate. I can't talk either. Um, Sydney's neighbor for ten years now, and I just want to say that I can remember hearing there's a new girl in the cul-de-sac, and I was not very happy about this because I had my boys, and they are my boys. And we played tag together, we played games on the trampoline, and, and Sydney came along and I was like, oh, <laughs> there's another girl in this neighborhood and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> um, turns out I'm at your wedding and you're pretty cool. Um, I am actually like so happy for you too, and just watching you guys grow together through everything you've been through with each other, it's really great to see this. I'm just so excited to see what God has planned for you, and I'm going to be there through the whole thing. So I love you. I love you guys. <laughs> so I was down in the basement playing video games, and uh, Sydney and John must have been, I think, in seventh grade. But uh, anyway, Sydney comes running down the stairs. She has tears in her eyes, and I think they must have gotten in a fight or something because uh, she was asking for, for my advice because uh, she thought that John was going to break up with her. Well, anyway. 
me being the gentleman that I am, I paused the video game and I comforted her. <laughs> no, but uh, I comforted her and uh, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, geez, why is she so upset? They're in seventh grade. It's not like they're going to get married. But, uh, <laughs> well, we're here today, nine years later, and they proved me wrong. And I'm so beyond happy they did. Uh, but uh, I love you both so much, and I hope for an amazing, happy future for both of you together. I love you guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cindy and John, watching you two grow into the amazing team you are today has been a true privilege. The two of you have matured and changed in so many ways over the past several years, but you've always done it t as a team. It gives me so much joy and comfort knowing that whatever obstacles you will face in the future, you will make it through as stronger people because you have each one another. You've always been stronger together. John, my sister is my favorite person in the world. Please understand when I say that you deserve to be with her, that that is the highest compliment I am capable of giving someone. It get, fills me with great pride to be able to call you my brother now. Sydney, <laughs> over here, Hi. over here. Sydney, in some ways I've always seen you and thought of you as my little lighthouse. All of our lives here brightened and illuminated because you've been a part of them. While we may no longer share the same last name, you will always be my baby sister. <laughs> I love you both so much, and I'm ecstatic to see the adventure that you, are to, you, that you two are going to create together. So, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in raising your glasses to the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Katlebowski.